I had COVID for about 10 days beginning September 12th or 13th until the 22nd, 23rd. And uh, the first five days were quite mild. In fact, I was thinking, oh, this is not that bad because I was, I, 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 was, I, I was in bed, but I was also up and about a lot. I didn't go anywhere. I stayed home for 14 days. I didn't go out of the house until the after 14 days. And so, but the first five days were mild. And then uh, day, on day six, it got, it just got nasty. I had all the typical symptoms, but, but even compounded uh, feverish, lightheadedness, fatigue, uh, chills, sweating, just, just real nasty for days six, seven, eight, and nine. And I spent most of those days in bed. I've lost weight in all this. And I, those were the days where I was contemplating because at some point I was thinking, I just want to die or let me, let me just go home or am I going to die? Is this a judgment on me? And I'm going to get to that. Day 10, I started making a quick recovery. God had mercy on me. In fact, it, that reminds me of a scripture where Paul says to, uh, where I think it was, uh, Epaphroditus, Epaphroditus, where he had almost died for the work he had done for the Lord, but God had mercy on him. You know, so God, I consider it the mercy of God on me. None of us are promised tomorrow. We should be living one day at a time. And so I started recovering on day 10. Day 11, I felt much better. Day 12, I felt great. And uh, yesterday, I believe it was day 15, I was out at a store and I was walking and still not, not at a store, you know, packed up against people. I still made sure I kept the distance and, and uh, I, I felt like this supernatural energy, like something was pulling me because I hadn't been using any energy. And so it was a strange phenomenon where I felt like I wanted to break out into a sprint for a whole mile. And I guess, so I guess that's a good thing where the Lord was slowing me down because I'm always busy, active, doing something. Uh, but that's not the main point. The, uh, on days six, seven, eight, nine, I was contemplating in my heart on the bed uh, uh, things that needed to change in my life. And I do believe that I needed to repent. Now, the sins that I needed to repent of, I don't believe or, or like over, over the top obvious Maybe to some people, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Some people I have been sandpaper to, so they might think I'm just a very arrogant person. And, and arrogance, pride, and vanity are those things that came to my mind that I needed to repent of. And I'm going to get to that. And I'm going to read some scripture verses. Now, over the years, I have taught consistently that if a believer gets sick, there's a good chance that there's sin there. It now, it doesn't have to be sin. I'm going to make the point from Scripture that you can get sick as a believer either because of sin or even if you didn't sin, you can get sick. And that's pretty clear in Scripture. And so I'm not being a hypocrite here because I've taught consistently that it, it, quite often it's, it's uh, sin. And so I'm no exception. I'm admitting to it that these things need to change. And so arrogance, pride, and vanity... Let me read first uh, from uh, Psalm 41.3, because the, the Bible does not tell us that we won't get sick. It, the Lord restores us from the sickbed. Psalm 41.3, the Lord sustains them on their sickbed and restores them from their bed of illness. And so we're not promised to not get sick. When we have faith in the Lord, we were trusting in him to restore us. And I guess anybody that's been sick, uh, if they have really contemplated uh, in their heart where they're at, they, they would, uh, they're, they're happy for it. In fact, the Bible says, th give thanks in all things. And so I am very, very grateful for what I went through because of what I learned very humbling experience for me and and i've been very fortunate for most of my life i have not been sick that often i've been blessed and that's a good thing but it also could breed pride thinking that uh think oh i'm untouchable now there are i've heard testimonies from the super christians 
who uh, I've heard, I can't remember some, some names, I guess I remember, but I don't, I don't need to mention any names, but I've heard believers say, I have not been sick in 50 years. Uh, so like, my goodness, it's, that's an incredible testimony. I, most believers cannot say that. So let me read some scripture verses uh, to deal, that deals with this subject matter and, and me in particular. Uh, let me start with vanity. I said arrogance, pride, and vanity. Uh, about three weeks ago when I was in the gym, and I'm 57 years old right now, and I'm stronger than I've ever been in my entire life including 30 years previously when I was 27. Just three weeks ago in the gym, I was using the leg press machine and pressing 500 pounds with my legs. And I have to admit that uh, I, if I think back at that day when I was doing that, I have to admit that I was proud of that. You know, and so pride and vanity. And let me read this scripture verse. Psalm 147, 10 and 11. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. I'm not saying that it's um, quitting working out and taking care of myself. I believe it's a very good thing for us to eat right and take care of ourselves. We have a body that we want to last for all the days that have been allotted to us. But we have to be very careful, and I'm speaking about myself, I need to be very careful to not let pride and vanity creep in. The scripture tells us this clearly. So in the future now, when I'm in the gym, I won't be focusing on, oh, I want to get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, but rather focusing on just simply uh, exercising, to keep cardiovascular fitness, keep myself trim and so that I'm not carrying more weight than I need to and just being healthy. And that's it, not being competitive. Now, let me read some scripture verses that make the point that uh, sickness can be because of sin and also not, be, not sin. Like you can get sin, you can get sickness even if you didn't sin. The first one is John 5.14. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. And so it's a, a hard pill to swallow when we hear this from the Lord. And it was for me also, but I'm, I'm so grateful. I am so grateful for this experience. The word says, give thanks in all things. And I am so grateful to God for allowing me to go through this to get my attention so I can uh, get back on track. And the Lord is so faithful. He is willing to push the reset button for us a number of times in life so that we will not perish with the unbelievers. And, and that's a different subject matter. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> but I do believe that uh, we, have to, we have to continue believing all the way to the end. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, let me read a scripture, uh, a couple of verses uh, that make the point that we can get, we can have a problem, sickness or whatever, without having sinned. And this is in John chapter 9, verses 1, 2, and 3. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. So that is a tough pill to swallow. Where, where people, there are people that have to wait on God's timing. And so it's really, it really is, wow, those, that's, those are situations where we really have to trust that God is a good God and that our day of reckoning is coming and that we in, in, in vindication from the Lord. And we, so we just need to keep on trusting. If there were sin in your life, repent, search your heart, repent. If there's no sin, then keep, then keep on trusting in the Lord that the Lord will show up eventually and he will restore you 
to health and then you will have a glorious testimony in fact that testimony will be a major part of your ministry for the rest of your life all Christians are ministers there's a couple more scripture verses I want to read that make the point that that in these two scripture verses the point is made clear that you can get sick you can get sick from sin or not even if you even if you didn't sin right here in the verse it says it and i think many christians have overlooked this through the years but it's just something that jumped out at me when i was reading it and it's james 5 verses 14 and 15 is anyone sick among you? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Okay, did you catch that? That last sentence, if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So that sentence right there, that scripture verse right there, makes the point that a person, a believer that has been sick, it could have been from sickness and even if they didn't, or from sin or even if they didn't sin. You see that? If they have sinned. So if they had sinned, if they had sinned means also that they may not have sinned. So it goes both ways there. Do you see that? I've been a Christian for 30 years reading the Bible, and this is the first time that I've recognized that, that if they have sinned, could, it means either way. And so either way, the Lord will restore you, and if you sin, he will forgive you. And so, so it goes either way. Now, there's one more scripture verse I want to read, and it pertains to the time that we're living in, because I do believe that uh, it matters and, and it deals with judgment. Now, I, uh, we're, we're living in extremely wicked, wicked, evil times where the leaders of this world, the, the people with, that control a lot of the world's wealth and also political leaders are, have been deceived by Satan. And because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and spiritual forces of darkness in the heavenly realms. There's more to that verse, but I didn't write it down. And so we have to continue keeping the right perspective, and I'm guilty of it myself. We need to pray that God will forgive these people and open their eyes to show them the deception of Satan in their lives, because the end for them is not going to be happy. It's not going to be a good ending for them. In fact, this verse I want to read makes that very clear. For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And so I do believe that I have experienced this as a judgment. Now, a judgment on God's people is not usually uh, for, the for the end result of death, even though it is possible. Believers have died from this. I think, I think for the most part, it's a judgment that teaches us so that we get the evil out of our lives so that we can move forward with more maturity and be ready for the days that lie ahead so that we can also experience the fullness of days that have been allotted to us. And I do believe that that has been the case with me. God had mercy on me so that I can finish the race, so that I can finish my assignment. And, uh, and so I've learned from this and and God will often use me in ways, because I'm older, I'm 57 years old, and I've been a Christian a long time, he'll use me in ways as uh, something that he's doing, and he's gonna start doing it through the body of Christ. And so I do believe judgment has begun in the household of God, and it's also the reason why we have not seen anything, we haven't seen a turnaround in this yet, because God is still working on his people to get the folly out of his people, to get the sin out of his people, so that when he's done with that, then he turns his attention to the wicked, those who do not obey the gospel. And then we're gonna see some very, very serious times, serious, sobering times. And so uh, thank you for watching this. I certainly hope this has helped you. Please visit the description box of this video. 
there are links, including a link to the website carboboxchurch.com. Where and uh, on the website, there's a donate page. I want to encourage you to donate into this ministry. We're full time ministers, my wife and I, and we're so grateful. We thank God for all of you who have helped us over the years, uh, that have supported this ministry so that we can continue to do God's work on the earth full time. We want to be able to continue doing this to the very end, however long that may be. Like I said, we are not promised tomorrow. We, uh, we live one day at a time. So thank you for prayerfully considering sowing into the ministry. Uh, we don't live lavish lifestyles, so we're not, we're not uh, living high on the hog when others are in need. So God bless you. Thank you for that. And also, these scripture verses will be in the description box also.